All right, in this segment, I want to explain 2.4 gigahertz helical antennas. Now, this is a an an, uh, type of antenna that you probably won't use too often, mainly because it's kind of awkward to construct, but it does have some advantages. Now, some of you might have seen my 2.4 gigahertz video scanner rifle. This antenna here is, in fact, a helical antenna. It consists of a coil of wire around a fixed diameter of non-conductive material, typically PVC pipe, with a back reflector and on the ass end has an end connector. Now, Jason Heckler in Australia has a very good tutorial on how to put together one of these and even has all of the technical explanation of all the math, all of that jazz. We'll get that to that in a minute. However, some of the materials are either kind of hard to get or they're just really hard to work with. So in this segment we're going to need a couple of varied materials. Uh, primarily is we're going to need some PVC pipe. And I've already started working on the helical because it's kind of boring watching someone wrap wire around a piece of pipe. Now typically the diameter needs to be either 1.5 inch or 2 inch. Typically 40 millimeter would be ideal which is close to 1.5 inch and that's what I have here. Now the thing about helical antennas is because of the wire spiraling around this it has what we call circular polarization. Typically in most antennas whether directional or not they're either horizontally po polarized or they're vertically polarized meaning the radio waves will either uh, fan out around the horizon or they'll go and fan out uh, vertically. So the thing about circular polarized is it actually spirals outward now this is pretty cool because this type of antenna is really good in a cityscape like New York City where I live. Reason being is every single time a radio wave will reflect off of a metal surface, its polarization will shift 90 degrees. Every 90 degree shift you can lose up to 3 decibels of gain. So let's say if you have a dipole antenna that's vertically polarized and your radio wave is, is bouncing off of some kind of metal surface like the scaffolding of a building, the internal structure, the siding of a house, some gate that's to a front store or something, you don't know what. Maybe if it's, it's a metal mirror. I have a lot of metal mirrors in my kitchen and in the bed, bedroom, the bathroom, everywhere. So radio signals are constantly bouncing all over the place, shifting its polarization. So every time it shifts, so it comes out as a vertical, it, it reflects off of a piece of metal, and then it goes horizontal, and you're losing three decibels of gain. Cool thing about a helical is it's either left-hand polarized or right-hand polarized, meaning either the spirals go left or the spirals go right. So if you're using this with a receiving unit in an area that has a lot of reflection, this would be an ideal antenna to use because it really doesn't care about the polarization. Pretty cool. But if you're using two of these antennas together, um, one on, on, the, on one side of, the, of your access point and the other on the other side of your access point, might be a good idea to make sure that you actually have your polarization in either left hand turn or right hand turn. Okay, so enough about the antenna, some of the materials that we're going to need. We're going to need a reflector. And that reflector has to be one wavelength, roughly five inches. Now, you can go and get these old cookie tins. It's literally just an old cookie tin. And this is a good source of metal. Um, it's also easy, pretty easy to solder onto this stuff, but it really doesn't have a lot of structure to it. So. We'll have to, you can use it, but I wouldn't recommend it. But it's always good to have this stuff around. If you're going to use this, which we will need a small strip of it later on, you'll see why, uh, it's a good idea to take some steel wool and try to scour any points that are going to be soldered because this metal will actually rust or they'll actually paint it. So by sanding away with some steel wool or if you have an abrasive uh, Dremel accessory or even a, a drill with an abrasive bit, get all the paint and all the varnish off of it so you can solder on, onto it pretty neatly. Of course, we're going to need said length of PVC pipe, typically 40 millimeter or 1.5 inch, which would be ideal. You can go up to one, uh, up to two inches, but try to stick with one and a half. It's easy enough to get. You can get them in 10 foot lengths, but we'll actually get into the calculation of the antenna later. So uh, I think this is 22 inches. I forget. I do believe this is 18 windings, but we'll get into that later. Okay. So you got a length of pipe. Of course, you're going to need some wire. Pretty much any solid strand wire would do. Really doesn't matter. In fact, some people will ideally use tape, metal tape, either aluminum foil tape, no thicker than three millimeters. You can't exactly use this, but if you have a psychotic girlfriend like I do, you can actually just lay a strip out and tell her, bitch, I want a 10 foot length, three millimeters wide, get to cutting. 
and hopefully she'll do it for you. Mine did. Um, you can use 22 gauge wire, 20 gauge wire, solid strand, single strand, really doesn't matter, wire. If you do have metal tape, that would be ideal, although I find it a little bit more difficult trying to wind the tape around uh, and trying to get a nice flat even edge. If you're going to use wire, I would highly recommend using solid strand, uh, mainly because it'll retain its shape. You want to try to get all the coils on here nice and tight and uniform. You really don't want to have too much of, of a distance, but, uh, either plus or minus, off of the actual off, off the uh, actual scaler. So that would be pretty important. Now for this back reflector, let's say you got an old PC cover and you cut that up, great. That's a pain in the ass. I'd rather not do it. So what I actually opted out to do is I just got a piece of really thick plexiglass right here. It's plexi plexiglass. Yay for plexiglass. And later on, I'm going to align all of the plexiglass on this with aluminum tape, just like we've done with other antennas using aluminum tape as reflectors, like with the CD spindle biquad. So this entire thing is going to be metal. Connector of choice would be an end panel mount. Uh, you can get creative. Uh, hopefully you'll have enough experience by watching the show to pick out a connector that you want to use for your project, but I would suggest an end panel mount, at least a, a two-hole variant. Uh, you're going to need at least one end cap for your PVC pipe, because this is going to have to plug in like so, and this is going to build the body of the helical antenna. So this is the actual driven element, which is going to be fed into the center conductor, the signal line of the end connector, and the body of the end connector will get in contact with the aluminum foil back plate, or steel, or whatever you want. And I've also included a couple of these U-shaped brackets, which are right off of Jason Heckler's instructions. So those are also pretty cool because then you can actually go ahead and make yourself three-quarter inch PVC pipe handle. So if you need to mount this outside, you can. If you need to just carry it around in your hand, you can. Okay, so let's go and review Jason's plans and details. We'll go over those a little bit and we'll see if we can start designing our first helical antenna. Alright, I'll put a title up on the URL. This is Jason Heckler's website. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. And he has a very good in in uh, tutorial, uh, very good instructions of how to build a 2.4 gigahertz hel helical antenna. So he tells you all the materials that you're going to need for his instructions. In the construction, he actually has a PDF file that you can actually print out and wrap it around your 40 millimeter or 1.5 inch PVC pipe and you can actually trace that. Now what I've done in the past is to use a very sharp razor blade and score the pipe cutting into the actual printed mark around the actual around the actual spiral. So if you notice in this picture what I would do is I would actually go and take a very sharp utility knife and score around all of the spiral. So, after that he's going to explain that you're going to need to take an end cap, which I've done, and you have to chop off the, the, uh, the side of it slightly. Reason being is you need to make room for your end connector. And here's a picture right here of exactly what he's done. I've done the same thing. And this larger end cap is primarily used to hold your reflector. But in my design, we're going to replace this with some plexiglass or some sheet metal. And if you are going to be using some kind of plastic or plexiglass, you will have to have some kind of metal lining. Either you use a cookie tin or aluminum tape. If you got brass tape, even better. And then he's going to explain that you're going to need a small metal shim to actually wrap around from the actual helical antenna into the driven elements. So right here, where my mouse cursor is pointing at the bottom of the screen, you're going to notice that that's where the end connector is going to come in. I'd highly recommend using a cookie tin. If you have brass tape, use it. You cannot solder to aluminum tape. Now what this is going to do is it's going to take the impedance level of the typical wire and match it with the 50 ohm impedance of the coax. Now, he does give explicit instructions on how to design this, so I'm really not going to cover into it much. Here is an image of his wire leading into the end cap, and right 
here, you can see where he has the uh, the actual triangular piece of, of, I think he said he used brass tape or copper tape, which is he was able to solder directly onto. Unfortunately, that's a material that's pretty hard to find. You, you can find it in, in hobby shops, but in my area, I haven't been able to find any, so I had to improvise. I used a cookie tin. And here are some pictures of his final design. As you can see, he used, a, uh, in the top left here, you can see that he used a couple of U-shaped bolts that are very common in most hardware stores. So you can use, the, uh, use this to mount this to a mast outside of your house or onto a handle if you want to carry it around. Here's a back end shot of, here's the, the U-shaped bolts, sometimes called muffler clamps or muffler bolts. He had to do some modifications to his end connector because the bolt that he ran to hold the end cap to the reflector together was a little too big. And he has some important stuff that you really need to know and the theory. So, since he explains it, I'm not going to go into it, but some of the things that we're going to need to know for the next part of this, the design. D lambda. Remember, this little squiggly upside down script Y character right here and right here. That's our friend lambda. That is the, that is the symbol, the Greek symbol that we use in math for wavelength. So, the diameter of the tube or diameter of lambda and we have the circumference of lambda. lambda. The circumference being the distance around the winding. And then the distance between between any two points will be the s lambda or the scalar. These are very important dimensions that you need to know. You need to know the diameter of the pipe, which is d lambda. You need to know the circumference of the pipe, c lambda, and we need to know the distance between the two points, two even points, I should say, on the actual pipe, which is s lambda. Now, Jason did a very good job explaining all of the math, even documenting his mistakes, and he shows some pretty complicated charts and whatnot. He even created a program called Helix Calc. This is a Helix calculating calculation program, but I did find a minor flaw in it that it doesn't actually uh, accurately calculate the distance between the windings on the actual PVC pipe. I might have been a programming flaw. I don't know. But if he ever releases a fix for it, that'll be great. So he goes into some some uh, some beam width patterns. If you remember from an earlier episode when I explained what uh, an estimated radiation pattern is, the ERP, this is what the field effect would look like with a three decibel beam width. And here's another on um, another plane. Now he also links to another pretty cool website. And it is a PHP helical antenna calculator. Now, I've already started filling in some of these values. Now, I'm going to use empirical, and I'm going to use uh, right-hand um, polarization. The center frequency is 2425 gigahertz. Sorry, megahertz. 2.425 gigahertz. And we need to know lambda. And it automatically calculates this as 4.8 inches. 5 inches, good enough. Diameter of your pipe. Now, I have 1.5 inch pipe. So, closest we can get is 1.499999. You know, close enough. Now, this is where things can get kind of weird. The number of turns. If you notice that I have the number of turns, or the number of of, of windings down the pipe set to 15. If we look lower on the page, we're going to have an estimated gain of 17.24 decibels. And the length of the pipe is going to be 17.646 inches. Now that's not, that's not so bad. That's actually not too bad at all. That's the, the gray helical that that I have attached to my wireless video rifle are these exact specifications. Now, if we bring these up to, say, 18, we'll bring this up to 18 windings and 
watch what happens to our antenna length as well as our gain. Now the antenna length is almost at two feet long, and we've only gained maybe one decibel of gain. To tell you the truth, that added gain is not worth the added size, in my, opin in my opinion. Now let's go up to 22 windings. Now we've only got 19 and a half decibel gain, 